Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Assalamu alaikum. Salar Khan here and today uh, we see two or three more examples relating to what? Relating to power factor before you know jumping into the operation economics. So in the previous video I told you that we will going to we will jump into the operation economics that is the cost models from the next video but let's say that is the next video. So for instance I have a question over here what is that question so example number one a three-phase 200 kva transformer example what does it states a three-phase 200 kva transformer uh, uh, no transformer is not written directly it is an 11 kilovolts to 400 volts 11 kilovolts to 400 volts uh, 50 hertz delta to star transformer 50 hertz delta to star transformer in a distribution system supplies the following single phase loads so to the phase red what is connected is 40 kilowatts at power factor is given which is 0.9 lagging for phase yellow what do you have is 25 kilowatts at 0.85 25 kilowatts at 0.85 power factor lagging and for the blue phase what do you have is 20 kilowatts at the power factor is given 0.8 leading power factor calculate the overall power factor and overall power factor and the actual kva burden the actual kva burden on the transformer so these are the two things that are unknown so i believe i've already done this sort of an example previously but let's say we do it again over here so first of all the thing is that for the transformer rating what do you require is you require the total kvas so for kvas what you need to do is you need to find the individual kvas and of course you cannot add them up directly because they are not in phase so for that you need to find the total power you will find the total kvas by the formula s is equal to p squared plus q squared under the root so for that you need the total power and the total q so p total is already given you can just write it down directly from here what would that be 40 plus 25 plus 20 this comes out to be uh, 60 85 so this is 85 kilowatts fine yes now you need to find q so q is what q is actually uh, from the from the power triangle you can find it out q is equal to s times sine of theta if this is theta this is s this is q this is p so some uh, uh, people have yes so q is equal to uh, s sine of theta yes this is fine so you you need to find individual ones so for sr first of all what would be the case 40 divided by 0.9 this is from the definition of cause or the power factor power factor is cause of theta which is p upon s so s is equal to p by the power factor cause of theta right this is for r similarly s for yellow would be what it would be 25 divided by 0.85 and then s for blue would be what it would be 20 divided by 0.8 so let us do the calculations uh, 40 uh, 40 divided by 0 0.9 is what it's 44.4 and then 25 divided by 0 0.85 this is 29.41 and 20 divided by 0 0.8 this is 25 so you've got your kvs now from here you can calculate this you can calculate your uh, thetas as well so from here you can calculate your theta from here you can calculate theta from here what is the theta please the first one is cause inverse of 0.9 this is 25.8 this is 25.8 then you have what cause inverse of 0.85 this is 
this is 31.7 and then you have cos inverse of 0.8 this is 36.8 36.8 fine yes so uh, yes yes so now you can calculate it what can you do is uh, you can just take your qr from here qr would be what this would be uh, s times which is 44.4 times sine of what 25.8 this over here the yellow phase would be what 29.41 sine of 31.7 for this one qb would be what 25 multiply sine of 36.8 let us do the calculations together sine of 25.8 is 0 0.43 multiply 44.44 this is 19.34 19.34 then you have what sine of 31.7 this is 0.52 multiply 29.41 and this is 15.45 15.45 and then similarly over here sine of 36.8 this is 0.59 and multiplied by 25 this is 14.97 now what do you have is you have to go for lagging or leading as well with this so have a look this one is lagging so this would be lagging this one is lagging this would be lagging and this one is leading so this would be leading with leading you would have a negative j right yes so with leading you have a negative j if you want it in this way with lagging you have a positive j lagging you have a positive j so you've got your overall uh, P, you need your overall Q. So what would that be? Q total, that would be what? Uh, plus 19.34 plus 15.45 minus 14.97. And this comes out to be what? 19.34 plus 15.45 minus 14.97 this comes out to be 19.82 19.82 have a look this is overall positive this is overall positive so you would say that this is overall with a plus j or this is overall lagging or this is overall inductive fine yes whatever you want it to be so s the s total or the kva of the transformer or the rating or the actual apparent power in the circuit is what this is 85 squared plus 19.82 squared under the root which comes out to be 80.27 80.27 right yes now what do you have is 80.27 so what do you have is uh, you can also have the power factor angle from here power factor angle q divided by p q divided by p tangent tangent is what q divided by p uh, tangent of theta is what you have got your total q you've got your total p right so through proper brushing it is q divided by p right yes so the overall power factor angle overall power factor angle would be what this would be phi is equal to tangent inverse of and q is what q total is 19.82 and the p total is what it is 85 so have a look what does this come out to be tangent inverse of 19.82 divided by 85 and this angle comes out to be 13.12 13.12 which means the overall power factor is what is the cause of 13.12 and which is what cause of 13.12 and this is 0.97 so have a look it is a very good power factor this is the overall power factor this would be lagging why because the overall wars are what they are inductive or they are lagging or with a plus j sign now the overall power factor is done and the actual kva burden on the transformer is what so the actual loading on the transformer is 80.27 and 
the the rating of the transformer is 200 so multiply this with 100 percent so this gives you what 80.27 divided by 200 this gives you 40 percent so the transformer is uh, uh, this much is the kva burden the actual kva burden on the transformer right yes so i hope this is clear i hope this is clear now i have example number 6.2 from the book example number 6.2 from the book let's say what does it states a single phase motor connected to 400 volts this is a single phase motor it is connected to 400 volts uh, 50 hertz supply and this takes a current of 31.7 amperes so the motor current is 31.7 amperes at a power factor of 0.7 lagging power factor is 0.7 lagging calculate the capacitance required in parallel with the motor to raise so the capacitance is unknown that would be connected in parallel to raise the power factor power factor 2 to 0 0.9 lag right yes so the circuit and the phasor diagram so you can draw the circuit and the phasor diagram so let's say if this is the circuit you know this is the motor this is the motor the current is flowing is im right yes it is connected across a voltage which is given is 400 volts a 50 hertz supply right and then you do what then you install a capacitor in parallel with this so this capacitance is basically the unknown quantity over here so what do you have let's say the capacitor current is named ic and the total current is the summation of the two is named i right so what do you have the phasor diagram if you draw from here is so this is your voltage reference this is your voltage reference yes this one is your motor current let's say this one is your motor current i m at the first angle that is theta one so from here you have theta one right this is cause of theta one so this would be cause inverse of this right yes then you install a capacitor which takes a leading current ic so you can just place it over here ic and then the the the, the second is this one is i which is now at phi 2 which is also given you can calculate your phi 2 from here is cause inverse of 0.9 right yes so they have i believe they have written it over here or if they have not uh, so let us just let us just see what happens is so the active component of i m so the motor component first of all if you talk about the active components or the wattful components are the same basically so if you talk about the active component talk about the active component so i m cause of theta 1 i am with cause of theta 1 right or i am with cause of theta m the first one the first one right yes so this would be what is it given i am i am is given yes 31.7 so you have 31.7 into 0.7 is given what does this come out to be is 21.19 amperes 21.19 amperes similarly for this one for the for the next current for the second current that uh, the total current the total current or you could say after perfect improvement the current in the circuit so that is i times cause of phi 2 so basically i is unknown and cause of phi 2 is 0.9 so put it equal to 0.9 times i right yes but but these two are equal these two components are basically equal right i cause of phi 2 is equal to i m cause of phi 1 which is this one the active components or the wattful components are what they are equal so put these two equal this implies what that 0.9 i is equal to 21.19 which implies that i the value of current is 21.19 divided by 0.9 and this comes out to be what 24.65 24.65 amperes so you've got the current that is after perfecter correction 
similarly now you have the reactive component so the reactive component what does this states reactive component this states what this would be for the first for i m would be what this would be i m sine of phi 1 so this comes out to be i m is 31.17 or 31.7 or whatever it is into sine of phi 1 and that is what sine of so let me calculate the angles in a hurry cos inverse of 0.7 i have it over here i believe or just let it go cos inverse of 0.7 this is 45.5 so this would be 45.5 and this one cos inverse of 0.9 should be something around 36 no 25.8 25.8 so so what do you have is so this one i am sine of phi 1 comes out to be what uh, this is 22.6 amperes 22.6 amperes and similarly reactive component of i the reactive component of I m is this total and the reactive component of I is this one. Right? Yes. So this is I sine of phi 2. So what do we have? This is equal to uh, 24.65. 24.65 times sine of what angle? That is 25.8 degrees. What does this come out to be? This comes out to be 12, 10.78 amperes. 10.75 amperes fine yes now what do you have what do you have so you found out the active component of both you found out the reactive component of both right yes now what do you have is ic is what ic is this thing this is basically the active and uh, 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 this is basically p and v uh, p and q you have calculated right yes so you can see from here is that the reactive component of i this uh, this one i c i c is equal to the total reactive component this one which is q1 q1 or the reactive component of reactive component of i m this is what reactive of i m minus minus this one which is q q m or or you could say after power factor correction or q2 let's say so this is the reactive component of i right yes so reactive component of i m which is 22.6 minus 10.75 this comes out to be what 11.85 amperes is the current that is being drawn by this capacitor by this uh, yes capacitor now what do you have ic is equal to v upon xc right ic is what ic is v upon xc you know ic is v upon xc v 2 pi f c from here can you not calculate c you can you have got your uh, ic from here you've got v which is given is 400 volts v is given is 400 volts f is 50 calculate the value of c from here is 94.3 microfarads 94.3 microfarads next what have they written is uh, well you can read it out for yourself Example 6.5, I've already solved this sort of an example. I've already solved this sort of an example in the previous videos. Just check it out by yourself. Do the practice, I will just write the data. Three phase, 50 hertz, 400 motor. Five, three phase, 50 hertz, 400 volts. Motor develops 100 horsepower. So 100 horsepower, this is when a horsepower comes, this is your output, right? The power factor being 0.75 lagging. So cos of phi 1 is 0.75 lagging. Efficiency is given is 93%. A bank of capacitors is connected in delta across the supply terminals and the power factor is raised. Capacitors in delta is connected and the power factor is raised. So cos of phi 2 is what? Uh, it is 0.95 lagging. 0.95 lagging. Each of the capacitor unit is built of four similar 400 volt capacitors. Four similar 100 volts 
capacitors right determine the capacitance of each capacitor so the capacitance is unknown so what can you do is first of all you've got the formula you've got the formula that qc is p times tangent of phi 1 minus tangent of phi 2 so from here you can find out phi 1 and phi 2 from here tangent of phi 1 tangent of phi 2 now for p what you need to do is so basically p is equal to p output divided by eta and p output would be what so you have to convert this horsepower to kilowatts multiplied by 0.743 or what is the ever is the case do this that way so from here you will get your qc in kvars qc in kvars right yes then what would be the case that would be three phase right that would be three phase then divide it by three for single phase values so you will get that and then you find out the capacitor current you can find out the capacitor current and then you can find out xc you can find out IC, IC which is V upon XC, V upon XC, isn't it like this? Or QC is V times IC. So from here you find out the capacitor current, then you put it over there to find out XC, and then from XC is equal to 1 over 2 pi FC, you can find out your C. So I've already done this sort of an example in the previous video. I will not do it again over here. I will finish this video right over here i will see you in the next one very soon inshallah till then take care of yourselves everyone around you do remember me in your prayers do subscribe to the channel goodbye